typically when you're working in a Laravel application and you run into some sort of code problem, you get this really great error output page with all sorts of details that can help you track down the problem. Sometimes though, you might have a more system level bug that is throwing such a wrench in the system, it's preventing your Laravel application from even successfully booting up. And so you don't even get to this error output. Uh, instead, you usually see some sort of generic 500 server error page. Uh, just jumping over to the notes that accompany this video, I have some screenshots of the kind of thing I'm talking about. So depending on how your application is failing, you might be seeing a very generic browser uh, HTTP error 500, or you might see a 500 server error uh, styled within a Laravel view. Uh, but long story short, all you're told is that there's some sort of server error. There's no useful output here. And to make matters worse, if you go to your Laravel log file trying to find some clues there, you might see that it's completely empty. Uh, Laravel might be so broken that it can't even write the problem to the log file. So what do you do when you hit this sort of roadblock where it's not working and you don't have useful information to understand why? Well, I'm going to go through five common issues that cause these problems, and hopefully one of these will match what you're experiencing and you'll be able to get things running again. So jumping in, the first several problems relate to uh, potentially an issue with the environment file in your application. That's this .env file that should exist in the root of your application. And the first common issue you might have is you just might not have an environment file. This will often happen if you're taking an existing Laravel application and you're deploying it on, say, a new server. Because environment files are often ignored from version control repositories, uh, it's not going to be transferred over with the rest of the code. It's something that you have to manually create. So to see what I'm talking about here, let's purposely delete the environment file in this application so we can uh, show what this kind of error would look like. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Come back to the browser where I have this application running. Obviously, previously I had this code related error, but now I'm going to refresh it. And now we see this kind of system level error I'm talking about where we just see a generic 500 server error page. All right, and once you encounter this in your application, it's always a good idea to go look in your log files just to see if there's any clues there. As I was saying earlier, uh, oftentimes there isn't uh, because your logging system isn't even able to boot up to write errors. But sometimes it depends on where the error occurs in the boot up process. You might have some details there. So let's take a look at it in this situation where we have a missing environment file. So I'm going to go back to my application. I'm going to go to the storage directory, logs, and find my laravel.log file. And what I can see is I do have an error in here. It says no application encryption key has been specified. Um, so it's not super explicit what the problem is here. It's not saying you're missing an environment file. Uh, but the application uh, encryption key is something that is set in an environment file. So if you know enough about Laravel and you've worked with it long enough, this would be enough of a clue to point you in the direction of that environment file is something to check. And of course, the first thing to check is simply that it exists, which in our case, we know it doesn't because we just deleted it. All right, so once you've narrowed that down, what do you do? Well, you want to create an environment file. And uh, one way you could do that is every Laravel application comes with this like environment file template.env.example. So what you could do is just create a copy of that as your starting point for your environment file. And I'll go ahead and do that here. I'm going to do it in command line. I'm just going to say cp for copy.env.example. And we're going to copy that over to a file called .env. And then we can see over in the file browser here, we now have an environment file. Um, another thing you could have done if you were previously working on this application in a different context, say like a local development server, and you had an environment file there, you might want to use that as your starting template. Copy that over to a new .env file in this new context, um, and then make edits to the configurations that are appropriate for the context in which you're running the application. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to go with the starting template that Laravel provides. And of course, I could go through and make edits here as is appropriate for this application. So I'll just fill in some demo information here. Uh, I'll change the URL in which I'm running this demo. And that should be enough to uh, proceed forward and get this working. Uh, except for one thing, notice that this app key value, this is blank. And uh, as was uh, perhaps foreshadowed a moment ago when we were looking at the Laravel file or the Laravel log file, our application needs an encryption key in order to run. And the encryption key is set uh, via this environment file in this app key. Uh, and this is just a special key that Laravel uses. Anytime it's encrypting values, it uses this key as part of that encryption. And without it, the application's not going to load. Um, and just to show that, let's refresh the application. Now that we have the environment file, it exists, but app key is still blank. 
All right, so now uh, we've made some progress, right? We're not just seeing a generic 500 server error. We actually have the Laravel error page showing, and it very clearly tell us, uh, tells us that no application encryption key is there, and it even tells us how to create it by just running an artisan command. All right, so that one's pretty obvious. If you encounter this error, uh, Laravel makes it pretty clear what the problem is. So let's address that. Coming back to the application in my command line, I'll run PHP artisan key generate. All right, you could see it updated my app key for me, putting in a, a encryption value there. All right, so now if we refresh our application again, we're back to that original uh, application level rather than system level bug that I had started off with. And let me go ahead and just fix that up so we can get this application loading fully before we look at some of the other problems. Um, so the issue here was within my routes file, my web routes file in the main route, I was just loading a view that doesn't exist. So I'll switch that to the default view that every Laravel application comes with. And that should get us to a uh, fully operational Laravel application. All right, so uh, bug number one was missing an environment file. Bug number two was not having our app key set. Uh, bug number three I want to look at related to the environment file is if you have an error in the environment file itself. Uh, for example, one of the most common errors I see is people try to put spaces in their values for their environment settings, and that's going to prevent the environment file from loading. For example, if I tried to call my application MySpace app, this would fail. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have spaces. You can. You just have to surround the value in quotes. All right, let me show you it without quotes in its failing state what this would do uh, when you go to load the application. All right, now we've got that very generic browser 500 HTTP error. Um, if we go over to our, um, our Laravel log file, we're not even getting updated information here. This is still the error we saw earlier. And just to show this, I'm going to completely empty this file, go back, refresh it, go back to the log file. Like, There's no clues there whatsoever. So uh, this really throws a wrench in the system in terms of booting up the application. It, it can't even get to the point where it can write information to your log file. Now, in this example, I obviously know what the problem is because I just purposely created it. But let's say you're looking through your environment file and everything looks good. You're really not sure what the problem is. Go ahead and run Artisan within your application because if there is a problem with your environment file, it'll tell you. And it might even be able to tell you specifically what the problem is. So here it's identified that there's an unexpected white space in the my app value. All right, so that quickly helps us narrow things down. We can go ahead and wrap that in quotes and that should get it working again. So go back to the browser, refresh it, and there we go. We've got our application booting up. Moving on beyond issues with the environment file, um, other common issues I see that prevent Laravel applications from running include uh, permission errors. Uh, specifically within Laravel applications, there's uh, two main directories that the server needs to have right access to. The first is your bootstrap cache directory, and then the next one is your storage directory. If you don't have the correct permissions on these two directories, your application will fail to load. Uh, and just to show what this looks like, let me first mess up the permissions on these directories for this demo application I have. And we could see what that looks like so you know what sympt uh, symptoms to look for. And then I'll show you how to correct the permissions. All right, so to mess this up, I'm going to run a command, the change own command. I'm going to add the recursive flag because I do want to do this to uh, a directory. And I'm just going to change it to an owner or a user that's not associated with my web server. Basically, a user on the system that doesn't have the appropriate permissions for these directories. Uh, and for this demo, I'll just use my guest user. And I'll start with the bootstrap cache directory, change the ownership there. And then I will do the same thing for the storage directory. All right, so now I have incorrect permissions. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to go back to the browser refresh it, and I am getting some error output here. So this is at least a little bit more helpful than the previous problems we saw where we just got that generic 500 server error page. We've got some details to work with. It says the stream or file, uh, laravel.log, which is in our storage directory, couldn't be opened. Right? Anytime you see a message like this, it just means the permissions are off on your storage directory. And then if they're off there, they're probably off on that bootstrap cache directory as well. All right, so how do we fix this? Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to identify what user on our system our web server is running as, because we need to give that user ownership of these directories. Um, and I've got a trick to figure that out. Let's go back to the notes that accompany this video. And we want to scroll down to the section on permissions. 
And there's a command we can borrow from here. Uh, what this command is going to do is it's going to search our system for processes uh, related to uh, common web servers, uh, whether you're running Apache or Nginx or uh, HTTPD is just an alias for Apache. Um, so, you know, regardless of the web server type you're running, this should give you the information you need. So let's copy this and I'm going to run it in my uh, demo server here. Uh, and in my case, I am running Nginx on this system. So you can see the, the results that I found are related to Nginx. All right, now from this output, let me see if I can maximize this so I see the results on a single line each. Um, basically, I have three results returned here. I have three different processes running on my system right now that reference Nginx. Um, the first one is owned by the root user. This is like the master process for Nginx, and I don't want to use that. I don't want to assign the root or admin user to these directories. So looking at the next one, I see www data. This is what I'm looking for, and this is actually a very common username you're going to see on systems when it comes to your web server. Um, this is a, the worker process we're looking for here. So that's the user I'm going to be looking for. Um, this third process is actually just related to the command that I just ran. It sees that as a process itself on the system. So you, we can always ignore that last line there. All right, so long story short, from this output, I can see that Nginx is uh, running on the server uh, as this www data user. So that's who I want to assign permissions to for that bootstrap cache and storage directory. All right, and in terms of doing that, uh, again, if we come back to the notes, I have some commands you can use here. We're just going to use that change own command again. We're going to recursively do it because we want to have it occur to the entire directories we're going to be referencing. And we're just going to change the user to www data or whatever user you found out in the previous step. All right, so I'm going to copy this directly from the notes uh, just to speed things up here. All right, I'll do it first for storage, and then I will do it for bootstrap cache. Right, and then I should be good to go to get my application running again. And perfect, we're back on track. All right, and with that, let's go to the last issue I want to talk about, which is a missing vendor directory. Uh, this is another thing that just like missing that environment file you might encounter when setting up an existing Laravel application on a new server because the vendor directory contains all of your outside dependencies that are managed by Composer. It is not typically something we track as part of our version control repositories, so it doesn't travel along with our code base. Instead, we have to make sure that Composer is building that vendor directory for us. Uh, now, to see what this would look like if you're missing a vendor directory, again, I'm going to purposely create this error. So I'm going to bring up my file browser for this project. Um, and I do currently have a vendor after, uh, directory. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. All right, so with that deleted, let's go back to the browser and see what uh, this looks like. And we've got ourselves back in that situation where we've got this generic 500 server error. We don't have a lot of details to work with in the browser. Uh, so just like we did previously, always a good idea to first start with your Laravel log file, see if there's any clues there. So if we go back, I'm going to go into storage, logs, Laravel log. That's empty, so we don't have any details to work with there. All right, and as I mentioned earlier, this typically just means the application is breaking at a point before it is even getting to the logging system booting up. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try that uh, trick we saw a moment ago where we just ran PHP Artisan and see if it gave us any useful output. And it looks like we've got a good clue here. We've got a PHP warning uh, where our uh, code base was trying to load this auto load file in our vendor directory and it's failing to do so. And anytime I see any sort of error related to my vendor directory, first thing I want to check is just make sure that the vendor directory exists, especially if it's saying something about not being able to find something. And obviously that's our problem here because we deleted it. All right, so how do we build our vendor directory? Well, that's Composer's job. So we're going to invoke Composer. Um, and in this case, I this is like a development practice server I'm working with. So I'm going to say Composer update. Uh, if this was a production server, you might want to say Composer install no dev, just to make sure that you're getting only production specific uh, dependencies that are in sync with whatever versions you were getting locally. Um, that's a bit of a whole other can of worms with Composer. So you can do some research on that separately or ask questions in the comments below. But uh, like I said, long story short, in this development context, I'm just going to say Composer update. And uh, I am running currently as a root user on the server, which I shouldn't be doing, but I'm going to be terminating the server after this video. So we're going to ignore this. We're just going to say, yes, go ahead and run Composer as the root user. 
give that a few moments uh, to build everything it needs. And with that done, we now have our vendor directory present again. So once again, if we come back to the browser, we should be in a working state again. And there we go. Uh, now rewinding a moment, I do want to mention that um, in errors like that, other places you might get information if you're not seeing information in your Laravel log file, or maybe you forget about that artisan trick, or it's not outputting uh, anything useful, uh, check your server error logs. There might be a message there indicating what the problem is. Uh, for example, let me go into my server logs on this server. Um, I think it's in uh, Verilog Engine X is where I should have my log files. And I'm just going to look at this error log file. And let's see what we've got there. Yeah, so we do have reference here. That same warning we were seeing from Artisan, we could see that that was written to our server error log file. So definitely a technique to have on your radar when you run into these sort of server uh, roadblocks and you're not seeing useful information in your application error logs, go up to your server error logs and um, see if there's any clues there. All right, now with that, that is not all the things that might cause a uh, generic 500 server error when loading your application, but that is definitely the most common ones that I see. And it typically just relates to the initial setup of your application, missing things like that environment file, that vendor directory, those initial permission settings. Once you get those working and you get the application working, typically the kind of bugs you're dealing with moving forward are just the the more uh, you know micro level code bugs. And at that point, you should be seeing the helpful error pages and details in your Laravel log file. So you don't have to do as much detective work. Uh, but if you are still facing a 500 server error and none of the tips that I've shown you in this video have been helpful, feel free to comment below, describe what's going on, and I can uh, perhaps point you in the right direction.